Hello guys. I have the December design and I've already traced it onto my fabric. And the way I did it was I printed the pattern out on the paper side of freezer paper. And then I ironed the wax side to the back of my fabric. And you'll notice it's in reverse because when you flip it over, then it's the correct way. So I've gone ahead and traced it using my light box. And I, what I wanna do for this one is add just a little bit of color. So I'm going to use a color pencil. I'm going to leave that freezer paper on because it helps stabilize the fabric. So I don't want a lot of color in the sky, but I do want a little bit. And then I want to also fill in the letters. So I'll go ahead and fill in the letters. And when you're using a colored pencil, this is just a regular colored pencil, and I'll give all the information in the pattern, what number and everything. And um, you wanna start off going pretty light, and then you can always build your color up, just like that. And I don't like to have it too sharp. I like to have just a, um, you're kinda almost using the edge of it, the side of it rather than a point because you don't want a really sharp line. You just want it to be nice and soft. You can use little circles, you can use back and forth, but the trick is to just go very lightly and then build up. Like that. And I found it's helpful to have the, the point of the pencil towards the um, drawn line, if I wanna get up right to the line. And you can notice with this um, freezer paper on the back, it makes it really easy to draw on here because the fabric is uh, real stable. Okay, so I'll go ahead and finish filling those in a little bit. Now I have to decide if I want to do, I was initially thinking do dark down by the snow line and then go lighter as it goes up. But if I did dark up here and go lighter and I'm using the blue thread, I wanna use the Baldoni withered blue, um, then the trees would show up more on this color than they would on the blue. So it's kind of a toss up, but I think I'm gonna do the blue down here and then fade up. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing where I'm just starting along the horizon line. And the withered blue kind of is a beautiful variegated thread. You'll see a little bit when we're stitching. And it's a little bit darker than this, so I think that'll be fine. You'll still be able to see the trees. And I think I want to start fading it out probably about right here. So this whole thing will be kind of colored. Um, if you haven't colored with colored pencils before, the important thing is that you need to fix them because if you don't, as you're handling it while you're stitching, all this color is just going to rub right off. But if you put a fixative on it, then you can even wash it and it will, the color will remain. And it's a liquid fixative and I, I'll give you that information too in a little bit. And you just paint it on with a paintbrush and wait for it to dry. It dries pretty quickly. And um, you don't want to put it on too thick because you're going to be stitching through it. But it is, it's easy to stitch through. It's not a problem at all. So I'm just like putting hardly any pressure. I'm just trying to get it to just fade up to the top. And then I don't need a whole lot of color down here because I don't, I just want it to be a very subtle color. Now I didn't draw my six inch outline on here so I'm not quite sure where that is so I'm going to go a little bit past where I think it is just so that I don't have a an edge of this fabric showing where it shouldn't okay okay I'll color in these and then I'll show you how to apply the fixative I have all the letters colored in and the background colored in the way I'd like and I am going to apply this fixative it's Jacquard Textile. It's a 100 colorless extender. And I use just a 
fairly stiff bristled brush and um, it's just a, a cheap craft bu a brush. You can water this down a little bit if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and apply it um, as it is and just go over the part that you've colored, not the whole piece of fabric. And you just want to make sure you cover it all. And like I said, this is a very light, you can color it in really with saturated colors if you want, but I just wanted a kind of a snowy soft blue. And you will notice it does change the color a little bit, not too much on this since I'm do I did such light coloring, but if you color it real uh, thickly with color pencil, this will uh, alter the color a little bit, make it a little bit brighter and darker. That doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean? More intense, I should say. Okay. So that's how you do the letters. Now for the sky, I'm going to start where it's the darkest and then work my way up. To where it fades. So it's super simple. There really isn't a right or wrong way. The only thing I would say is the color does move around with the paintbrush. So if, uh, if I were to paint this way, I'm going to get a little blue over there. It does pick up some of that color. So you want to be careful not to um, paint across where you don't want the color, just keep the, the extender where you want the color to remain. I think this is going to be really pretty and subtle. And even though I'm putting this on over this uh, line, which is one of those Pilot friction pen lines, those lines still will come out when I iron it you know, with the heat, you know how those pens, the lines disappear with the heat of an iron. It still will work even after I've applied this fixative. And I still have that freezer paper on the back. It just kind of makes it a lot easier when it's stabilized. And it will still dry. Okay, that's a very subtle shading. I like it. I think that's really going to be sweet. Okay, I'll let this dry and then we will start stitching. So the fixative is all dry on the color pencil and now I've started stitching. I was using a different blue, the withered blue, but um, I took that out and decided to go with this tealish blue, which I think goes really nicely with the colored pencil that I, that I used. So on this version, I'm using mostly just a stem stitch which I've gone over on numerous different videos. So you can go back in time and, and look at those if you have any questions. These little snowflakes are just individual stitches, but I'm only going to the center. I'm not going all the way across. I think it just looks a little bit better that way. And they're pretty small. Um, you want to start you don't want to start with the knot in the center because all of your stitches are going through the center and it would really make it bulky to try to stitch through that. So if you're going to use a knot, make sure you use it on one of the outside arms of the snowflake. So that's the little snowflakes. Easy peasy, just like that. These little trees, some of them are beyond the horizon. So this line here is supposed to be the horizon of the snow. And then some of them are in front of that horizon line. So I want to stitch that horizon line before I stitched the trees. Because as you can see, the trunk needs to go over that snow. So the way I do these trees is I'm just going to take just one straight stitch across the bottom, come up in the middle where the trunk is, and now I can just stem stitch up the trunk. And because the branches are pretty short, you can stem stitch them, or you can just take a single straight stitch. 
And I've done that on a couple of different uh, trees where I've tried both ways. So you can see which way you like the best. The stem stitches make it a little bit bulkier of a branch. So first we'll do this little topper. And I could do a fly stitch there, but I really want to be a real, real V because sometimes fly stitches are a little rounded. So I'm just going to go and take two little stitches. Now I'm gonna come out at this little V. Do my V. And now, since that is such a small, short branch, I'm just gonna take one straight stitch there. I'm not gonna to try to do a stem stitch there. And then I'm gonna hop over to this side and do the same thing. So I can, I'll leave it up to you if you wanna do a stem stitch or if you want to do a, um, just a single straight stitch. As they get longer down here, you could try a stem stitch. So you can see on here, this is just a straight stitch. This is a stem stitch. So you can kind of see the difference a little bit on that tree right there. So that is your choice. For the smoke, I am debating a couple of different ways that I want to stitch this one. I want to do something other than a stem stitch because I want it to be a little lighter feeling than the rest of it since it's smoke and it's supposed to be kind of flowy. So I could do a little running stitch or I could do a stem, or a, yeah, excuse me, a back stitch. And I think I'm gonna to try the back stitch. We'll see, I can always take it out. That's the beauty of it. Um, the back stitch is a little bit finer of a line than a stem stitch. So I think it might differentiate itself just enough to where it'll look a little bit different than all the other stitching, I'm hoping. So for a, a back stitch, you're just going ahead of your where the thread comes out about an eighth of an inch and then back in the exact same hole and then past where the thread comes out and then back in the same hole. And sometimes it's helpful to do this in a hoop I have found. Uh, I don't have one near me so I'm just going to kind of wing it here and if my line kind of wiggles a little bit that's okay because it's smoke. So, so far it's looking pretty good. So I think I will keep it as a back stitch on this version. The other way that I stitched this design up was using a red th thread and an ecru thread. And I did a lot of couching on this one. So couching is where you run one strand of thread and then you're just going to whip stitch over it with another strand of thread. So in this one, I did, I used the red with the um, wheat husk to couch it. And then for the candy cane, I did the wheat husk with the red to couch it. And I also added, if you can see here, a little bit of the ecru thread as snow on the branches. I thought that'd be kind of fun. And then for the smoke, I did the same thing where I just couched it. And then the other thing I did here is I took a little bit of the white, the ecru, and I stitched it right in the center of the snowflakes to make them pop a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to couch this snow or this candy cane and I'm going to use the blue with white stripes. So what you want to do is you're going to use your thread and pull it up at the bottom and then I'm just going to tack it. Now I'm going to take the thread I'm going to couch with, which is this cream color, and I'm going to bring it up about an eighth of an inch around that line. Now I'm going to go over the blue thread. I'm going to go back in that same hole and now I've couched that blue in place. And I just continue up the candy cane. Just repeating that same thing. You don't really see that ecru very much, do you?
So one strand didn't look thick enough, so I've doubled my thread. I'm gonna try this again. Okay, so this doubled up, I think is showing up much better. And I could even double up the, the blue I could have to make it a little thicker of snow cane or a candy cane. Hmm, I'm still not digging it. Okay, let's try this. I've doubled up my blue because I want it to be a little bit thicker. And now I'm gonna try this couching again. And I'm not liking that either. So I think I'm just going to stem stitch that. Okay, so this is what I think I'm gonna do. I did a stem stitch candy cane. Now I'm taking the ecru thread, just one strand, and that was just one strand of the blue. And I'm just going to weave it under these stitches at an angle like that. That I think is the ticket. So you wanna make sure you get through under, go underneath all of the stitches. And I just go up a couple stitches just so I can get the stripes at a little bit of an angle. So you're not picking up any of the fabric, but you're going between the blue and the fabric. There, I like this, yay. So, you know, have fun and experiment, or let me experiment for you and um, work out the kinks. <laughs> and there's a little striped candy cane. That is pretty cute, I like that. I think that really turned out sweet. So I'll repeat that over here on the L too. The only other stitch that's left on this design uh, is the little bow tie. So there's a little piece of blue string that's gonna tie this candy cane to the top of the N. So we're gonna do that little stitch and we wanna take it over the candy cane. So we wanna stitch that after. And then we're gonna take these these are just gonna be straight stitches, the little tails of the thread. And then we're gonna do little lazy daisies to make these bows. So a lazy daisy is, we're going to kind of mimic the shape of the loop with the thread. And then you put your needle down right at the base in the same hole where you brought it up and bring your needle up at the end of the loop, carry the thread under the loop and then we're gonna tack it on the other side. And that is a lazy daisy, or in this case, it's a bow. Now we're gonna do the other bow. So you bring the needle up right at the base. Again, you mimic that circle or that loop and the thread goes under the needle. And then you just tack it right on the other side. And I'll come up and I'll do this other little tail right there. And that is all the stitches we have for this design. I'll go ahead and finish this up. So whether you choose to do it in the blue or if you want to play around and use some couching, you can combine the two. Um, it was kind of fun too to add that snow. It's very subtle, but it does sparkle just a little bit. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful December with family and friends and everybody stay healthy and we'll see you in the new year.